Hello, my materialistic minions. Bo Shevisu here coming to you with this SL20 from vault -Tec. This thing right here, I'm gonna show you actually how to go about and open this thing up if in fact you're going to be using this to store a firearm. Yes, there's a nice little light up there. I'm gonna show you how to take it off the mounting plate. I'm gonna show you everything about this, plus give you a few hints, tips, and tricks on how to get the most out of this thing. It's very robust, it is very heavy, and yes, I would highly, highly recommend getting this investment if in fact you are a firearm owner. Now, there are a few things to keep in mind with this. Uh, the one thing I would say, I'm just gonna say spoiler alert right now, you can jump ahead in the video and see my thoughts on this smart key, but I would not recommend pairing the smart key with this. I would just throw it away immediately. Uh, the actual features that come integrated into this safe, uh, they, they are strong enough to allow you to actually access this thing quickly. So don't undermine the security of your safe with this smart key, okay? Now with that being said, let's hop right into the setup of this thing because I found that is the number one asked question because the last thing you want to do is go through a giant thick manual when you could probably just watch a, a video that's a few minutes long and save yourself a ton of time. Now you're probably looking up this video because the manual can be somewhat confusing. We're gonna jump right into and pretend like you just had this thing arrive in the mail. The mounting plate is on there. I'm gonna show you how to get that off. First things first is go ahead and insert the key. This little thing will pop up. You may need a bit of a pocket knife to kind of pry that up. It's pretty darn tight. And then at that point, this thing should pop open and you will see on the inside a, uh, a little tab here. Let's go ahead and zoom in. See that little shiny bit right there? If you push in the drawer a little bit, that tab will come down. That will unlock. So there's one on this side and there's one on this side. You're gonna want to fold the one on this side down, which corresponds with the mounting plate. That will disengage the mounting plate. That's how you get this thing off. Uh, fold that little tab down. Then once that's off, now you can go ahead and put the battery in. The battery goes into, again, you're gonna have to kind of close this a little bit to access the battery compartment, but the battery is right under here. And if you kind of kind of pull it down with your thumb, you can see that the battery, uh, in case you're wondering about polarity, uh, that is, you know, which side is positive and which side is negative. Uh, it doesn't matter. Just just stuff it in there. See, you can see the, the butt of the battery right there. Just slide it in there all the way to the point where you can actually push this all the way up. So push it all the way in and click. Now that's up. And then it, there's a little welcome chime uh, to confirm that the battery is in. Okay, now let's go ahead and set the code of this thing. Uh, the default code that comes with it is just one, two, three, four, five. We are going to set this to just a, a really bad code. Let's just do one, two, three, four, okay? So you can set it uh, whether there are four combinations, so one, two, three, four, or you can actually set it to up to eight digits. So you could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You could do something like that. All right, but let's go ahead and, so you're gonna have to have this open in order to access right under here, the little program switch. Um, it's a tiny little button. It kind of feels like the tip of, uh, I don't know, a, ne a needle or something like that. I mean, it's not that sharp, but it's, it's pretty small. It's immediately right under there. So first of all, go ahead and hold that down for three seconds. So follow along with me. Ready, here we go, and hold down now. One, two, three, and it lights up, which is the indicator for us to enter our code. Here we go. Hold it down immediately, turns green, and then enter your code again. And then hold it down immediately. It will confirm that it took our code, which is now one, two, three, four, by having that little green chime. So now to test it, let's go ahead and close this. Theoretically, when I type in our new code, that should, should pop open. Here we go. Boom, just like that. Isn't that cool? So that is how you set the initial combination. And now we are going to tell this thing what kind of fingerprints we have so that I can go like this 
and it opens up. So let's go ahead and tell it what kind of fingerprint we have. All right, let's calibrate it. Once again, the little button under here, which you just saw, that's what we use to set the one, two, three, four up here. But this time you're not gonna hold that button down. You're just gonna click it, click it um, uh, quickly, okay? So just one time, ready, set. So we're gonna, let's do, let's just do this finger. Okay, here we go. So one, two, three, push. And there are the little crosshairs. So we're gonna put our finger there, lift it up again. Good, and you'll see the numbers turn green when it does it correctly. Good, and then just keep doing this until all five of them are green. And that is it, it just registered our fingerprint. Let's go ahead and now test our fingerprint and go. And it works, very nice. Now you guys being intelligent little consumers, you would think that you would follow those exact instructions that I just showed you on how to register those first two administrative fingerprints, but no! No, 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 no. vault all of a sudden throws us a curveball, and in order to register more than two fingerprints, let's say I wanted to register these three as well. No, you have to follow completely different directions. So I apologize, I'm gonna have to move rather quickly in this demonstration on how to register more fingerprints. Let's say, for example, this one right there, <laughs> because this is so frustrating. Guys, if you're watching this video because you're having trouble registering more than two fingerprints, I'm sorry to help drown away my sorrows. Please buy me a pint of Guinness next you see me, okay? vault if you're watching this, please just keep the instructions simple. We gun owners, we are a simple folk. We're used to, you know, field stripping guns and putting them back together. We're mechanically minded. So when you start to change the directions like this, it kind of makes us a little frustrated, okay? Okay, now, back to the actual video here. Okay, sorry for the snarkiness, but yeah, I'm a little frustrated on how to register this finger right here, okay? All right, here we go. First of all, we're gonna go ahead and, once again, gonna move quickly. I can't move slowly because it's gonna lock me out. Thank you, vault -Tec. All right, here we go. So, once again, hold, find the little program button under there. We're gonna hold it for three seconds until all those red lights light up. Ready, set, go! Quick, lit up, administrative thumbprint. Come on, come on. Boom, green, while it's still on there, hold, uh, click that program under there. Boom, now it's ready to take my middle finger. Boom, there again. Boom, keep going until all three, or I'm sorry, all five green ones are lit up. And hey, it took it. Wow, that was frustrating. Let's see if it took this finger, all right? Here we go, moment of truth, come on. Uh. Oh, I didn't, I didn't put it on correctly. Okay, let's try it again, there. Come on, come on, big guy. Did it register? If it didn't register, I'm gonna be angry. Come on, eh, uh. eh. Uh. Hey, there we go, that took a little bit. And now we are going to set up your app. Uh, I don't know if you want to set up your app to actually have access to this, but there is Bluetooth connectivity. So you know what? Just for giggles, let's go ahead and do it. First of all, you're going to want this open, battery installed. Everything is charged and good to go. Your battery should probably come with about a 90% charge already in it. So just go ahead and take it out of the box, put it in there. Now you're going to download the app. Uh, in my case, I'm using an iPhone. And then once the app is there, you should pretty much immediately go into pairing mode. Uh, it's going to ask you for your password that you just set. So in our case, it was one, two, three, four. And then at that point, it is going to ask you to hold down this button under here as well as buttons four and five all at the same time. So you're gonna have to put your phone down and use both hands to do, hold down this and that button under here for about three seconds. And then at that point, it will confirm that yes, the pairing has been made. And then at that point, you can go into the app, you can adjust the brightness. So there's a little light right here that lights up, which is pretty cool. You can turn off the beeping sound, which I did immediately. I do not want my safe to actually beep to indicate that I'm opening my safe. Before I move on to my last and final setup instruction, which is how to pair your smart key, if in fact this came in the mail, or if you purchased it separately. But in essence, when you push this, it will then open that up. So this theoretically is supposed to be, let's say for example, taped underneath your bedside table or on your bed frame, and supposedly you push that and it opens it up. 
However, I'm just gonna say right now, I would not recommend this. I believe very, very strongly that this undermines the security of your safe. Uh, as you well know, a hidden gun is a found gun, meaning that if you hide this button somewhere and a small little child comes up and pushes this and opens it up, well, they now have access to whatever is in this safe. And that just completely undermines the safe. So why not just have your fingerprint or the code to access your safe? Why in the world do you need this thing right here? Now, of course, you're like, well, it's just like having a key. It's not like having a key. A key you hide in a secondary safe somewhere. Let's say a giant vault in the basement. This is probably in your bedroom. This is designed to be within six feet of this thing. So guys, if you have a kid, your kid is gonna find this. Uh, think about it. When you were a kid, you knew where all the secret stuff was for your parents. You knew where the things were. And if in fact you're even considering this thing, that means that you're probably a pretty smart person. And if your child only got 90% of those smart genes, then they're smart enough to figure out where you hid this button. And even if they do stumble across it, it's super pushable. It's just, it's squishy, it's so much fun, and they're just like, hey, I'm gonna push this. And instantly, they hear this thing go open. And, well, there's probably gonna be a loaded firearm in there. And that's the last thing you want. So guys, don't undermine your security. I'm just gonna say, return this, or if it came automatically, throw it away. Do not undermine this incredible product. This is five out of five stars, highly, highly recommended, very secure easy to mount, easy to set up if you follow my instructions. But once again, that thing, just throw it away. So that's it. Let's move on to the final pairing of your smart key. If in fact, you're still interested in pairing it, which if you are, more power to you. Now this last and final step is going to be uh, with the help of my assistant, Penny, right here. And this is in the event that you have one of these little smart keys. When you click this, it will open this up. So if you ordered it with this, you're gonna to want to pair this with that. Yes, I'm sorry to say that it does not come automatically paired, but don't worry, you don't have to read all those instructions. You can just watch this handy YouTube tutorial. Now, first of all, have that at the ready, okay? And just a moment, I'll tell you when to press it. Don't press it quite yet, sweetie. Okay, here we go. First, the program button under there, and you're gonna hold down this and the number three at the same time. So I'm gonna get ready there, try to do this with one hand, and holding down the program in three, two, one, holding down and holding down. Wait, now go ahead and press it, Penny. Boom! Did you see it turn green? That means that this just synchronized with that. Penny, let's go ahead and test that to see if in fact that opens. Go ahead and press it. Hey, it works, well done. That's good. Yes, that's very good. Okay, now obviously you don't want your child to have access to anything in here. So that little key fob right there, put it someplace safe, all right? Don't put it in your sock drawer. Don't put it anywhere where a kid is gonna find it because clearly they're, they're gonna see a button and they're gonna press it and this is gonna pop open and they're like, hey, now we've got access to it. So use your brain, treat that almost as if it's as important as your combination that you set on here. We have a bonus, last little hint tip trick. This is a mounting uh, tip. And let's say, for example, you have this plate. We're just gonna be using the side of this uh, dresser right here as an example. But if you have this plate somewhat level or even barely even tipped back a little bit, then your drawer won't actually open. So I would recommend as you're mounting this thing, favor a downhill trajectory. So that way, when you do open it, so watch, we're gonna tilt it down just a little and then I'm gonna release it in three, two, one. See how it opens just like that? Because that is because we are using gravity on our side to open it up. It doesn't have to be too extreme, like 45 degree, because otherwise there's gonna be a lot of strain Ugh. day after day after day opening this up on there. So it doesn't have to be too extreme, but at the same time, don't have it perfectly level. And whatever you do, do not have it tilted back a little bit because when you try to open it up, <laughs> See, it didn't even open there. Uh, down, there we go. There is now it opens like that. The spring in there is not strong enough. 
unless you have it tilted down a little bit more. So hopefully that say, saves you some heartache before you actually go ahead and mount this thing.